radical new direction for Ethereum. Specifically, it's all coming from Vitalik Buterin's 2026 roadmap reveal. To get 100x faster, the roadmap points to two. Let's call them rocket fuels that have to work together. Let's start with the one that tackles raw speed. ZK EVMs, zero knowledge Ethereum virtual machines. That sounds incredibly complicated. It is, but the idea behind it is actually pretty elegant. Just focus on the zero knowledge part first. Imagine you need to prove, you know, a secret password, but without actually telling me the password. A zero knowledge proof lets you do that cryptographically. Okay, so it's proof without revealing the data. How does that help scale a blockchain? It creates instant trust. ZK EVMs allow Ethereum to process a huge number of transactions. We're talking thousands off the main chain. So the main network isn't getting bogged down with every single little calculation. Precisely. And then, and this is the magic trick, it uses those proofs to instantly verify that entire batch of transactions back on the main Ethereum chain. The main chain just looks at the proof, this kind of cryptographic receipt, and says, yep, that's valid. It doesn't have to redo all the work. Ah, so it's like the main chain is the final judge, but it gets the verdict instantly without having to sit through the whole trial. You got it. That's the scalability fix. It removes that core bottleneck. And when you get that speed of off-chain processing with the security of on-chain verification, you've solved the latency problem. This is how you scale from thousands of users to potentially billions. And for the user, it's a game changer. Your transaction is final immediately. No more waiting 15 seconds. Okay, so ZK EVM solve for speed and volume, giving us that instant feel. But speed isn't everything if it costs a fortune, right? Gas fees have been the other major problem. They've killed rallies and priced out normal users. And that's where the second engine comes in, peer to us. Right. And this might be the biggest architectural change in Ethereum's entire history. We always talk about transaction speed, but the real bottleneck on a busy blockchain is something called data availability. Can you break that down for us? What's the data availability problem? In simple terms, for the network to be secure, every node has to be able to see all the data to check that everything is correct. But when you have all these new solutions processing hundreds of thousands of transactions, they create a mountain of data. The old way of doing things demanded that every single node download and check all of it. And that effort, that computational burden on every machine is what sends gas fees to the moon. So high fees aren't just about high demand. They're a direct result of the data burden on every single participant in the network. Exactly right. And that's why high fees have been the number one killer of adoption. It just doesn't work for small payments or everyday use. And PeerDAS is the fix. The sources are calling this the largest structural shift ever. How does it solve this data problem without, you know, compromising security? So instead of making every node download everything, PeerDAS uses this clever technique called sampling. Think of all the data like a giant book. Nodes don't download the whole book. They just grab a few random pages, check them, and confirm they're available. It uses some very advanced crypto called Read Solomon Encoding, which basically guarantees that if enough nodes have sampled enough random pages, the whole book must be intact. That's incredible. So you're spreading the work of verification across the network, but you still have cryptographic certainty. Exactly. It's almost like a giant decentralized BitTorrent for blockchain data. This is what lets the network handle that massive data load from ZK EVMs without crushing every node under the weight of it all. And what does that mean for me, the user? It means transaction costs become negligible, basically free. When you get rid of the cost barrier with PeerDAS and you've already made it instant with ZK EVMs, that's when you open the floodgates for true global adoption. You're finally solving both problems speed and cost at the same time. So speed solved, cost solved. But the roadmap goes even deeper. It introduces this third standard, which is less about performance and more about long-term survival. Mm -hmm. Something that gives Ethereum a huge moat against competitors like Solana or Binance. That's right. I mean, speed is table stakes. Durability. That's what matters if you're building a world computer. Dala calls the standard the walkaway test. And it's not just about open source code. It's about uh, existential resilience. The test is very precise. An application is only truly decentralized if it keeps running, even if the original developers walk away or disappear entirely. Wow. That's a simple idea. But when you think about it, it shows how fragile most crypto projects actually are. Yeah. I mean, you see so many projects claiming they're decentralized, but their website, their whole user interface, it's all running on Amazon Web Services or sitting behind Cloudflare. If that company goes bust or a government shuts down that server, the app just dies. The coin could die. It's fake decentralization. It's a hidden central point of failure. And that makes them fragile. Why would any major institution build on something that one company can just switch off? If your infrastructure has a kill switch, it's not permanent global infrastructure. It fails the test. But isn't that an incredibly high bar to clear? Does that risk 
pushing away smaller, innovative teams? Or is this about filtering for projects that are truly built to last? It's a filter. And a necessary one. The whole point is that anything built on Ethereum has to be, for lack of a better word, unkillable. Mm -hmm. It has to survive its creators. It doesn't mean you can't use AWS for your front end, but the core application has to be accessible and functional, even if that centralized piece goes down. That commitment is the ultimate moat. And that's what brings in the serious long-term money. If you're an institution looking to build for the next 50 years, not the next five months, this guarantee of survivability makes Ethereum the safest bet. So let's put it all together. We have speed, we have low cost, and now we have this guarantee of permanence. What does this all mean for how the market should be valuing Ethereum today? It feels like the old rule book just got thrown out. It did. The market price right now is still pricing in the old view, all the technical problems and constraints we've been talking about. This roadmap is a clear signal that those constraints are being systematically dismantled. It's the classic setup for a repricing event. Okay, let's break that down piece by piece so everyone listening can see that shift from the old view to the new view. Let's do it. So the old view of what ETH is for, it was mainly seen as a financial layer for DeFi and NFTs, a pretty niche market, really. The new view for 2026. ETH is being positioned as the operating system of the internet, the foundation for everything, from gaming to global identity. And the cost was a killer. The old constraint was those insane gas fees that made it totally unusable for normal people during disk times. But the new reality, thanks to Peerdos, is that fees become negligible, almost free. Suddenly, doing thousands of tiny transactions is perfectly viable. It's a total paradigm shift. And the speed, or lack of it, was always a barrier. The old speed was stuck at around 15 transactions per second, with that long wait for confirmation. Now, with ZK EVMs, the new speed is just orders of magnitude faster, with instant finality. It puts Ethereum in the same league as the big centralized payment networks. And finally, the risk. The old risk was that the whole thing was built on hype and depended on the founding developers sticking around and, well, mm -hmm. on their AWS servers not getting shut down. Exactly. But the new safety is that guarantee of unkillable infrastructure. When an application passes the walkaway test, it's designed to last forever. It's a permanent public good. So the message from Vitalik seems crystal clear. The period of fixing the engine is over. The tech debt is paid. The tools, messy EVMs plus PeerDAS are ready to go to make Ethereum actually usable for the entire planet. And if you look at the market today, it's still priced based on those old constraints, the slow, expensive network. This 2026 vision is a direct assault on that reality. Every source we looked at points to the same conclusion. This is the setup for a classic repricing event. The market is going to have to shift from valuing Ethereum as a niche crypto network to pricing it as an instant world computer. That's a huge change in perception. It is. And if you connect all these dots and look at the bigger picture, you realize the goal isn't just about making transactions fast. That's just table stakes now. The real goal is creating these truly unkillable self-sustaining applications that have no single point of failure. When you combine instant speed, near zero cost, and that guarantee of survival from the walkaway test, you've changed the entire game. And so that leaves you with a really important question to think about. If our critical digital infrastructure is now, for the first time, guaranteed to run forever, no matter what happens to the company that built it, the economy or politics, what kind of high stakes, globally important systems suddenly become safe enough to build, that level of permanence changes everything we thought we knew about digital trust. 